Hello dear children, namaste and welcome to session 4 which is the last and final session of the chapter, the plant physiology chapter, Absorption by Roots. This is Ambika, your biology master teacher right here on this super amazing platform of Vedantu. Okay guys, so of course uh, the Doubts Plus Mentee session will be there but we'll have to do that live anyway, right? So today will be the last discussion or uh, concept level session for this particular chapter and then we just have uh, two more plant physiology chapters remaining. Okay, so let us as always start with an inspirational quote. Remember, to be in the top 1%, you have to be willing to do what the other 99% aren't. So think deep and ask yourself what you actually want. And where there is a will, there is always a way. All right. And today, let us learn about um, diffusion, osmosis and osmotic potential, root pressure and conduction of water and food in the sense, the um, experiments related to all of this. Experiments to prove scientifically and experimentally give evidence for all of these processes happening in plants. Okay. So, yes, uh, but of course, uh, our homework question, which I've given you in the last session, remember, why does coconut milk taste sweet? And what is the source of the sweet taste? So, the answer to that is, the sweetness is due to the natural sugars present in the milk. And the milk contains sweet solute particles, which move from high solute concentration to low solute concentration, that is, from the coconut to its milk and that is how the sweetness is imparted to the coconut milk okay so this is about it it talks about the concept of diffusion from a higher concentration to a region of its lower concentration that's about it okay so let us get started with today's first experiment of course i really really wish we could um, we could have some sort of uh, way by which uh, you know we could actually like go to a lab and do this and all of that but uh, of course considering whatever situations we are all in uh, at the moment unfortunately we'll have to give up on all that let us try and set up our own imaginary lab and try and understand the basic principles of this exper of these experiments okay children um, so let me just uh, remind you one thing uh, just one very very simple thing the unit plant physiology in icsc class 10 which uh, includes this chapter as well it does have scope for uh, questions based on some of these experiments in section b Many of the past year's papers have had those. Um, but it's not just from this chapter. It is from uh, the chapters, transpiration and photosynthesis as well. Okay. So uh, more complex experiments actually come in those chapters. Um, even then, there is scope from this chapter as well. So it's very, very important to understand it. Uh, it's not like you have to memorize it. I think all that you need to do is understand the basic principle of each of the experiments and that's it. You are sorted. Okay. So the first one is to demonstrate the activity of diffusion using a dye. So the materials required, this is a very, very simple experiment. Um, materials required are mainly, of course, beaker and water and very importantly, a sugar cube or a tablet of soluble dye potassium permanganate okay so a uh, potassium permanganate is commonly used in this because of its color and um, as a result of you know the uh, how obvious it is to watch its way of diffusion potassium permanganate is well preferred for for these experiments um, i think this in fact is something very very simple that you guys can also try out if at all you do have a uh, potassium permanganate at home but of course only under um, your parents supervision okay nothing without them knowing uh, the procedure is very simple again place one of the following in the beaker containing water sugar cube a tablet of soluble dye a potassium permanganate as i said potassium permanganate is preferable uh, for its easy availability and um, for the way you can easily observe how it diffuses. So just place one of these in the beaker containing water, let it dissolve and within a few seconds, for the next few seconds or minutes, just leave it undisturbed and observe the changes in the water. This is the uh, starting first step. Later on, once you have added those potassium permanganate crystals to the water, second step would be like this. And the third step, you can actually see that the uh, colored crystals have evenly diffused across the water. 
so that is our observation the soluble the the solute crystals slowly dissolve and spread around in the liquid as you can see here this is more of a realistic image and the result obviously is that molecules move around freely in all directions as there is no obstacle in the path of the dye which is the solute the dye or the uh, solute which is potassium permanganate in our experiment okay so that's about it until uh, it becomes evenly purple in color it just keep diffusing keeps diffusing around okay so this is to demonstrate diffusion now coming to osmosis what is the main difference between osmosis and diffusion if you just think about it osmosis has one major uh, two major differences of course uh, one is definitely the presence of the semi permeable membrane separating the two solutions we are involving in the experiment the second main difference from diffusion is that in osmosis we only talk about movement of water molecules we don't talk about diffusion of solute molecules or air molecules or anything like that we only talk about the movement of water molecules okay so this is it how do we demonstrate the process of osmosis to uh, demonstrate this we need two setups okay one is something that we call the experimental setup which is where we will be observing whatever we want to and the other one is something that we call a control setup okay which will be slightly different uh, so you will understand more about it as we discuss in the experimental setup we will have a thistle funnel we'll have a cellophane paper okay a sheet of cellophane paper which acts as the semi permeable membrane here and we'll also have a beaker filled with water and in this experimental setup we are going to be using concentrated sugar solution in the control setup uh, these three are exactly the same as this one but the difference is that instead of concentrated sugar solution we are going to be using just plain water in the thistle funnel but everything else is the same thistle funnel cellophane paper and the beaker filled with water so what do we do how do we proceed in the experimental setup you start by adding some concentrated sugar solution in the thistle funnel this is the thistle funnel okay into it you add some of the concentrated sugar solution and then you cover the mouth of the thistle funnel here over here cover it with cellophane paper okay and tie it securely of course so that uh, nothing can move out of the funnel nor can anything directly enter inside the funnel okay uh, so tie the cellophane paper securely around the mouth of the funnel and then what do you do invert this funnel in a beaker containing water so in this beaker we have got water we are inverting this thistle funnel containing sugar solution into this beaker now what you have to do is you just need to mark the level of sugar solution on the stem of the funnel this this level okay the initial level is marked here this is the initial level leave it undisturbed for some time and that is the difference that you see here leave it undisturbed for some time and after some time after a few minutes you would see that the level has risen up the level of this solution in the stem of the thistle funnel has risen up so this is the initial level this is the final level this is the experimental setup so uh, are we able to conclude something from this maybe but we need more evidence um, that is exactly why we have this control setup in the sense in the control setup if you remember the only difference we have made is that inside the thistle funnel instead of concentrated sugar solution we have filled it with plain water everything else is exactly the same you cover the mouth of the uh, funnel with cellophane paper tie it securely invert it in the beaker filled with water mark the level of plain water on the stem you do exactly the same thing leave it undisturbed for some time but you would see that nothing happens the level just stays the same so what is the difference between experimental setup and the control setup the only difference is the solution inside the thistle funnel even the membrane the semi permeable membrane which is cellophane paper here is the same as what we used there so why is it that here it did not rise up so yes this is the observation we've seen that already in the experimental setup level of the sugar solution in the stem of the thistle funnel rises whereas in the control setup it remains unchanged so what are the results and conclusions 
In the experimental setup, some of the water from the beaker has managed to pass through the cellophane paper into the thistle funnel containing sugar solution. Okay. Whereas sugar from the thistle funnel has not passed into the beaker. How do we know this? Because the level of solution in the, if you look at this, the level of solution in the thistle funnel has risen up. Whereas the level inside the beaker would have gone down a little bit. Okay, that is what brings us to the conclusion that sugar has not passed into the beaker. The cellophane paper has acted as a selectively or differentially permeable membrane or a partially permeable membrane and has allowed only water molecules to pass through and not the sugar molecules. This is it. Whereas in this case, because here also it's plain water, outside also it's plain water, there is no movement there is no net movement of water molecules that's happening pretty much same on both the sides of the semi-permeable membrane on this side which is inside and outside which i mark as one and two pretty much the same concentration so no movement of molecules whereas here water has moved from an area of higher water concentration to an area of lower water concentration right on the contrary uh I mean, not exactly contrary, you can also describe it as water has moved from the dilute solution to the concentrated solution. Okay, yes. So this is about the uh, osmosis experiment. There is something very similar to this that we can also do, which is a slightly modified version of the same experiment to demonstrate the process of osmosis using a whisking bag. Okay, so a whisking tubing. Um, Thistle funnel, sugar solution, distilled water, beaker, stand, clamps, all of these are used. And as you can see here, what we do is about 50 cc of water is poured in a beaker. This beaker that we are using, we are pouring about 50 cc of water. Um, and then what we do is the mouth of the thistle funnel is covered with whisking tubing, which here acts as the semi-permeable membrane. Okay, and this thistle funnel is filled with strong solution, which is a highly concentrated solution. It can be anything, maybe sugar solution or any other highly concentrated solution. Now, the same thing like we did in the previous one, the thistle funnel containing the sugar solution is lowered into the beaker and clamped vertically. Again, same thing, the level of the sugar solution is marked as the first level. Okay, this uh, level we are marking it and we are leaving it undisturbed for some time and later we observe that the water level in the capillary tube rises up. So what is exactly happening? This portion, if you actually zoom into it, uh, you can understand that is exactly what's shown here uh, demonstrating osmosis because outside the whisking tubing, we have plain water and within the tubing like on the other side of the tubing which is which acts as the semi-permeable membrane on the other side we have the sugar solution so water moves from the dilute solution into the concentrated solution that's it water may also move in the other direction but then the thing is there is only net movement of water from the dilute uh, area to the concentrated area this is because in this sugar solution, if you actually look at it, there are also sugar molecules which are present here. So these sugar molecules may come in the way of the water molecules which are present along with it. And as a result, they may serve as an obstruction. Whereas for the other side, there is only plain water. Freely, they are able to move without any obstruction. As a result, net movement of water is always seen to be more from the dilute solution into the concentrated solution and as a result you see this level of water rising up in the capillary tube so this is another uh, example uh, another example of an experimental setup for osmosis so the same thing after about two hours the sugar solution is found to have risen upward the water level in the beaker which is this outside beaker slightly falls so yes, obviously the water molecules have moved from the beaker where they are of a higher concentration as in water concentration is high to the sugar concentration where water concentration is low and sugar concentration is high. Children do remember that it's a very, very important thing to know. Whenever I say um, high water concentration, only then it's going to be a dilute solution. Okay, I'll just write that down here for you so that you don't forget high water concentration would mean 
it's the same as a dilute solution okay but when i just say a highly concentrated solution it means a lot of solute concentration in it okay if i'm talking about water concentration i will specify water concentration if not we'll just say a concentrated solution okay meaning is totally different although it's just a matter of one or two words here and there okay children yes now uh, let's take a quick break before we move on and look at the next experiment children do remember we are coming towards end of the academic year it's high time you made some serious decisions about how to go ahead uh, with your studies to prepare yourself to give you that extra winning edge to make yourself confident for your final exams so do remember vedantu is always here for your support um, on the vedantu platform you will be able to get access to unlimited live classes with fun and high level quizzes you get to compete with students across the world and you the best part i would say is that you will get access to interactive replays with live quizzes and leaderboards what does interactive replay mean children just in case you have missed out any session that has already happened i'm not talking about youtube okay i'm talking about the vedantu platform just in case you've missed out any uh, session which happened live you have the option of clicking on the replay button and watching it again but the good thing will be it will just be as good as any live session because you will be able to take part in the quiz just like a live session which would mean you can also get your chance to come on the leaderboard it won't be like a recorded uh, Uh, you know entirely recorded video that you would be watching you can participate even if it's a replay then premium downloadable content with hand written notes of master teachers this is also something that's available then in class doubt solving unlimited doubt solving with quality tests and assignments for every session every chapter so that you get that extra winning edge and confidence to face your final exams and of course for children who register for vedantu pro uh, you get access to free 5000 plus micro courses which are chapter level courses designed for you and free crash courses for competitive exams yes children so um do remember that uh, while talking about the pricing we completely believe in uh, the concept of making education affordable and accessible to all so less is always more how exactly does it work uh, before i tell you that remember to click on the link in the description box below and check out the pinned comment also the coupon code that you can apply to avail the best offers out there on this is ambpro right children so how does it work now let us do the quick math so that you are completely making an informed decision okay so you can choose from one of these three one month three months or the six months plan uh, for the one month plan the normal pricing is 2699 okay uh, whereas if you apply the coupon code ambpro it's going to reduce to 2159 okay likewise for 3 months you can get it with the application of the coupon code ambpro you can avail it at rupees 5599 okay and for 6 months it's going to be 9199 of course okay so um, i know just a uh, random figures may not uh, do the trick for you to understand it easy enough easily enough so the best way is to calculate the per class price as i always tell you don't jump into a conclusion without calculating how much it would cost you per session or per class in a one month subscription you would be able to get access to about 200 live sessions so for 200 sessions you are paying only this much So when I say two thousand one fifty nine, it means you are paying that much for two hundred sessions together for English, social, science, and maths, all four subjects together for one entire month. Which means your per session price or the per class price is coming down to rupees eleven two thousand one fifty nine by two hundred, just rupees eleven. And if you go ahead for a three month subscription, it would mean that you get access to six hundred live sessions. Obviously, because one month is two hundred, six months would be, uh, sorry, three months would be six hundred, right? So that is gonna reduce it to rupees nine. And for a six month subscription, it would be even lower. It's gonna be rupees eight per class or per session. so children think about this because this is definitely something that you can compare to. Uh, 
whatever your favorite uh, snack quick snacks and refreshments are could be your uh, favorite party pack of uh, lays or your favorite brand of chips or uh, any any chocolate any any of your favorite chocolate bars it's actually even cheaper than that so children definitely make the best use of it and please do share it with your friends as well because as i always say sharing is caring right so this is the right time to make an informed decision before it gets late okay so now coming to an experiment wherein we are going to understand about osmotic pressure all right so what exactly is osmotic pressure if you think about it uh, if you have a confusion in that concept children we've discussed it well in detail check out the main playlist and then come back and watch this okay um, the materials that you would require for this experiment would be an airtight piston bearing weight then a thistle funnel water sugar solution and cellophane paper okay this is a key point here airtight piston bearing weight why so i will tell you how do you proceed how do you progress with this what you do is you introduce an airtight piston bearing weight in the thistle funnel here okay you are introducing this in the thistle funnel um, and you filling the funnel with sugar solution you're covering uh, and securing its mouth by tying cellophane paper that that part of it is similar to osmosis and you are placing it inside uh, a beaker containing water that much is the same the only major difference as i told you is the airtight piston bearing weight okay now what you do is mark the level of solution and keep the setup aside for about 2 hours and observe the change if any okay so this is the level of the solution which we've marked as the initial level this is it we are marking that leaving it undisturbed for 2 hours coming back and looking at it again what would we see we would actually see that there is no change in the level of solution in the thistle funnel so what was the difference if you just compare this experimental setup with the normal osmosis experiment which i explained to you a few minutes ago the only main difference is that here we have an airtight piston bearing weight uh, at the top and there we did not have anything like that but everything else is the same sugar solution the cellophane paper a beaker containing water but there the water level came up the solution level came up but here it doesn't so what is it what does it mean there is no level no rise in the level of the solution and as a result we can say there is no entry of water from the beaker into the funnel as a result we can conclude that the osmotic pressure is equal to the weight or pressure required to nullify osmosis it is the pressure which is caused by this weight this airtight piston bearing weight the kind of pressure that it is causing is equal to or is sufficient to prevent osmosis this is what helps us come to the conclusion of osmotic pressure which is why we define osmotic pressure as the minimum pressure required to prevent osmosis right children okay now coming to root pressure if you remember root pressure is something that's uh, that plays a major role in absorption uh, by roots in plants so let us try and understand that to demonstrate root pressure what do you do the materials required are a balsam plant glass tubing rubber connection and manometer manometer of course to check the pressure okay so what you do is cut a balsam plant a few centimeters above the soil and what you do is immediately fix a glass tube with the help of rubber connection okay this way the rubber tube and uh, fix it to the um the plant okay and then what you do is connect the later region with the manometer now what would you see after in the setup you would observe that water exudes out or water flows out from the cut end of the stem and rises in the column pushing the mercury in the manometer this is where the mercury is the mercury in the manometer would be seen to rise up why would it rise up because there is an increase in pressure so that is our conclusion that the rising water raises the mercury present in the connected manometer so the upward flow of water is obviously due to the heavy pressure from the roots and that is what we call root pressure so it's not an uh, not a plant in which the roots have been cut off do remember that we are only cutting the balsam plant a few centimeters above the soil the roots are still intact 
because only then will we be able to uh, check that it is going to be the root pressure that is causing this rise in uh, level of the water. Once again, the upward flow of water is due to the pressure from roots, which is called root pressure. And it is that increase in root pressure which caused a rise in mercury in the connected manometer as well. So this proves root pressure. Okay, now coming to experiment 5 to show that roots absorb water. Okay, something that we know and seems obvious, but something to give it experimental evidence, that is what we are going to be looking at now. This is also super easy, okay? Um, a young plant of balsam with roots, uh, oil and two test tubes are all that we require for this. So, setup A and setup B, just like uh, the osmosis one wherein we had a control setup and an experimental setup, here also we have two of them. In setup A, we are just filling a test tube with water and adding oil to it to um, avoid evaporation. In setup B, we're filling the test tube with equal amounts of water and oil just as setup A. And then in setup B, we are also pulling out a young balsam with root and young leaves and inserting its root in the test tube. So I will mark this as setup A and I will mark this as setup B. Okay, so that it's easier for us to compare. So in setup B, we are using the plant with its roots of course um, and we are leaving it undisturbed for one to two days. The only difference between A and B is that here there is a plant, here there is no plant. Everything else is the same water and a layer of oil. Okay, so why are we adding oil? To avoid evaporation. Okay, yes. So what we would see is that at the end of one or two days, the level of water in setup B decreases while the water level in setup A remains the same. Where there was a plant, water level went down. Whereas here, it remained the same. Yes, water level. Whereas here, the water level went down. Yes, why was it so? That is our result, our conclusion and result. Water loss in setup B is due to absorption by the roots because that is the only difference in both of these. Okay, so this is what proves that roots absorb water. Now coming to the next step, which is, of course, we have now seen that roots absorb water. Now the next important thing is proving that water is conducted through xylem conduction of water through xylem so let us understand that now to show that water is conducted upwards through the xylem what are the materials required a young and potted balsam plant eosin stain which is a pinkish uh, red colored stain that's commonly used in bio experiments water and knife that's all that we need okay okay so how do we go about with this um First of all, we are uprooting a medium-sized young balsam plant. We're placing it in a beaker. Okay, what does that beaker contain? N not pure water. It contains a stain, which is eosin solution, which is about pinkish reddish in color, as I've told you. We are completely submerging the root in the solution. We are ensuring that all the root area is submerged entirely in that pink solution. We're leaving the setup aside for about three to four hours. And after this, we take out the plant, we wash it really, really well with tap water, with clean tap water. Now what we do is we transversely cut the root, stem and leaves, as in we take a thin section of the root, stem and the leaves and observe it under a microscope. And this is what the cross section of the balsam stem would look like after the experiment. Can you see those red areas? Yes, the xylem element with eosin dye is what you see here. So what does it prove? We see that xylem vessels show a distinct pink color, which means that the xylem vessels will appear different from the remaining because these will be stained red by the dye, as in a normal plant in which the eosin stain hasn't been made to get into the uh, uh, plant body wouldn't have uh, this pink color in the xylem vessels. Whereas here, because we made sure that this solution which was taken up by the roots, it was red in color, it acted something like a, uh, like a, what do you say, a tracker, right? So that helped us track the movement of this solution through the xylem and that is exactly why only the xylem elements are seen to show this pink color. 
okay so that proves that water moves through xylem Okay, so now we have another experiment here to demonstrate conduction through xylem. Two leafy shoots of balsam, knife, beaker, water and stand. Okay, so um, now have a look at this. Setup 1 and a setup 2. Okay, let us call this setup A and setup B to make it uniform. Uh, in setup A, what we are doing is we are cutting the balsam plant under water to avoid entry of air bubble. Okay, place the plant under water and then cutting cut it by keeping the lower end of the stem dipped in water remove about three centimeter long outer ring which is flowing and keep the central part intact okay girdling this is what we call girdling okay so um, imagine it to be concentric areas the diagrams are here for you to understand okay so what we are doing is we are keeping the lower end of the stem dipped in water and we are taking about three centimeter long outer ring because the outer ring is actually phloem inner ring is xylem okay so uh, this is why we are choosing the balsam plant because it's easy to observe the difference uh, what would happen if phloem is not there what would happen if xylem is not there because we know that here the outer ring is the phloem and the inner one is the xylem like here this is the phloem and the pink ones are the xylem which is why we are using the same plant here okay yes so this is what it is we are keeping the central part intact and now we are fixing the stem to stand and allow it to remain still for about two days now in setup b what do we do we cut the balsam plant under water to avoid entry of air bubble by keeping the lower end of the stem dipped in water remove equal length of the central part in this case we were keeping the central part intact Whereas in this case, we are removing the central part, xylem, that is the main difference. Xylem is re retained in setup A, xylem is removed in setup B. Okay, uh, thus keeping the peripheral part intact while the central part is removed. Okay, this is the difference. In one of them, xylem is retained, in the other one, xylem is removed. We fix the stem to stand and allow it to remain still for about two days. Now, what do you see? Yes, this is the setup xylem and phloem as you can see what is the difference you can see that in this case where the xylem is retained the leaves are turgid and in this case where the xylem was removed in setup b the leaves are wilting here the phloem had been taken off here the phloem is retained but the xylem has been taken off and the leaves are seen to wilt what is it? That is our observation. The twig in setup A remains turgid and stiff. As you can see here, setup A remains turgid and stiff. Whereas in setup B, it gets wilted and droops down. Yes, wilting leaves. So the result is that it is the xylem which helps in conduction of water. Because in the absence of xylem, wilting occurred. Okay. Yes. And now coming to a similar one, which is conduction of food through phloem, importance of phloem. So the aim is to show that food from the leaves is conducted downwards through phloem in the stem. Materials required are a potted plant, which could be guava, um, and a knife. That's it. Now what you do is you cut a ring around the stem of a healthy potted plant or around a twig of a guava or any other tree. And the cut that you're making should be deep enough to penetrate the phloem and the cambium, but not the xylem. Okay. So remember, it should be deep enough to uh, penetrate into the phloem and the cambium, but not the xylem. Cambium would be found in between the xylem and phloem. Phloem, cambium, but not into the xylem. And what you do is you just observe what happens to the plant or tree over a prolonged period of time. Just leave it undisturbed uh, for hours together and see what happens. You can see that this is the difference you see here. You can see a swollen region above the girdle in this case. Okay, so that exactly brings us to the observation. The sap oozes out of the plant as soon as it is cut. And after about a week, actually, we can observe that the part of stem above the ring grows in diameter. This area above the ring grows in diameter, but no growth is observed on the lower part of the stem. So what is going to be our result in conclusion? Yes, this is it. The sap in the peripheral part flows in the downward direction. The lower stem stops growing because there is no supply of organic nutrients here. As a result, whatever stored nutrients it had, 
it uses up that and once that supply is exhausted it may stop growing it may die off and also something that you don't see in this diagram is that um, leaves also continue to remain fresh and green so the fresh healthy condition of the leaves also proves indicates that leaves are continuing to get the supply of water through deeper located stem which means because here the xylem wasn't cut leaves continue to get access to the water but then here because phloem couldn't conduct food well enough uh, the lower part couldn't grow further all right so that was the last experiment and children um, let us just quickly answer two questions to see how much of it you have understood first of all um, dash is the reason why oil is poured in the test tube while conducting weighing experiment remember that experiment wherein we had a setup a and setup b and oil was poured i told you that's for a reason oil is poured for a reason why was it so preventing loss of water by evaporation secondly preventing loss of water by transpiration or do you think oil prevented loss of water by spilling or none of these yes and your time is up the answer is preventing loss of water by evaporation yes that is exactly why we had uh, oil in setup a and setup b in setup a although there was no plant we did pour oil right in order to prevent a uh, loss by evaporation and the last question for the day water and salt or water and minerals travel upward mainly in the dash phloem cambium xylem or none of these water and minerals or water and salt travel upward mainly in the dash and your time is up the answer is xylem water and salt travel upward mainly in the xylem always remember phloem transports bidirectionally xylem transports unidirectionally so that's about it we are done understanding the experiments related to diffusion osmosis and osmotic potential root pressure and the conduction of water and food and i have a homework question also for you here look at the experiment shown below why was it necessary to take colored ears in solution in water in the beaker remember this experiment yes why did we take colored solution this is children i would say one of the most important experiments in this chapter so understand it with full detail in full detail uh, because only that is going to help you recall it at the time of exams okay so let me remind you that we've got amazing courses at vedantu pro so remember end of academic year and this is the right time to make an informed decision children remember to visit the link in the description box below and the pinned comment below apply the coupon code ambpro to avail the best discounts in vedantu pro all right so that's about it from my side children do remember to click on the like button if you have enjoyed this and please do share it with all your class 10 icse friends because they will also benefit from it i'm very very sure and stay subscribed to the channel vedantu 9th and 10th english click on the subscribe button right now in case you haven't done it yet because right after a uh, completion of your chapters just as we've been doing for cbse 9 and 10 we will keep coming up with more and more interesting and useful series to help boost your confidence levels for your final exams all right and remember to also follow me on instagram at ambika underscore vedantu because it's not just a uh, studies that happens there in fact there is less of studies and more of fun that happens there you can check it out and all our posts are related to moral stories inspirational stories and lot lot more okay so until we meet again stay home stay happy and stay healthy bye bye